Fora TV. The world is thinking. Some of my other, other favorites of the 10, which are, I mean, the 10 are my favorites of all time, and then there's a few that really always stick out to me when I'm describing the book. And one of them is Antoine Laurent Lavoisier's experiment, which, um, you know, the, the, the quick answer is that he um, discovered oxygen, although it's a little more interesting than that. But um, Lavoisier, you know, at the time, people thought things burned because there was something called phlogiston. And, um, and the exper you know, the theory actually, you know, made a lot of sense. You know, like at a piece of wood, would burn because it had lots of phlogiston in it. So anything that was flammable was rich in phlogiston. And after you burned something, you had a pile of ash. So it followed that wood in its unburned form consisted of uh, phlogiston and ash. And then somehow when the phlogiston comes out of it, it just leaves the pile of ash. And you know, the same thing was true for other forms of what we now call oxidation. Like if you heat a metal in a beaker it'll you know, form usually kind of a whitish kind of crust on it. And uh, they call that a calx, C-A-L-X. And people again thought, well, you know, it must be because phlogiston is um, you know, being forced, you know, forced out or it's fleeing from the metal. They didn't really know. Um, and then therefore, metal must actually be made of calx plus phlogiston. But the big problem that bothered Lavoisier and some other scientists was that like once you, once you calcined a metal like that and you, and you weighed it, it uh, weighed more than the original metal. So they thought, oh, well, um, you know, phlogiston must have negative mass. So, <laughs> so that, you know, sort of bothered people. But they thought, well, you know, who knows? Maybe it does have negative mass. But Lavoisier finally devised this experiment in which he took mercury and heated it in a closed beaker, so you have basically a closed system. He heated it until the little crust forms, the calx, which is kind of a reddish, reddish color in, um, with mercury. And then, after a few days of doing this, when he wasn't producing any more of the calx, he skimmed it off and isolated it, and then put it in another flask and heated it until it um, started giving off a gas. And then he wondered, you know, what's this gas? So he lit a match basically and stuck it you know quickly under the bell jar and then you know it goes woof because he's found oxygen or he actually put a mouse under there and then the mouse was all frenetic and running around and at the same time Joseph Priestley another another scientist of the same period um, had done some similar experiments and he'd found this gas and he breathed it himself, and he thought, wow, this is so great that they're going to start, you know, serving it in par you know, at parties and things and at the taverns. And, and um, Priestley named it dephlogisticated air. So he hadn't really, <laughs> hadn't made the leap. But um, Lavoisier realized that it was actually a different, you know, component of the atmosphere. And then the next step was after he'd taken out the, oxygen, you know, there's air that was left behind from the burning of the mercury. So he tried that and he stuck a match under it and then it just immediately was, was um, squenched. And he put a mouse under there, you know, and the mouse started gagging and, you know, we know now that it's um, nitrogen. So he basically isolated oxygen and isolated nitrogen and then you know through later experiments showed that those were in certain proportions the um, composition of the atmosphere so that that was just an amazing one to me and then you know about 10 years later Lavoisier he was on the wrong side of the French Revolution so he ended up ended up losing his head literally under the guillotine and so it really, it really makes you know in each one of these I've tried to there's just a really interesting story that you, know, you interweave with the science. And, and in the case of Lavoisier, he, uh, he'd come, he was what they called a tax farmer. And the French government basically worked out a deal with private businessmen where they got to collect the taxes and then they would take a portion of them and keep them. And then you didn't have to have things like the IRS. So it's amazing that the Bush administration hasn't come up with this, but the ancient regime in France did exactly that, and Lavoisier was one of the tax farmers, and he married a tax farmer's daughter who was like 13 years old at the time. Um, 
And apparently she was very pleased with the arrangement because her other suitor was 50 or something. And, um, it turned out, I think, to be a good marriage, and, and Marie Lavoisier ended up um, doing all these beautiful drawings of her husband's experiments and the apparatus, and, and then she survived him when both Lavoisier and Marie's, um, and Marie's father were, or I guess Marie Anne's father, were um, brought to the guillotine because they were, they were tax farmers.